Christina, we have you in the audience. Yeah, I just did that in case I have to hop off and do CRC. I oh. don't want to lose a connection. Got it. Thank you. We're recording. And there's Matt. And Andy, I'm going to ask you to repeat that we're recording because the chair needs to make that announcement. We're not good at, at making sure that we do that for the chair. So. Will do. Okay, so I'm going to uh, call the Finance Committee meeting of Thursday, December 15, 2022 to order um 3 p.m and thank everybody for being um here who uh and i think we have one member present who's going to be hopefully joining us very soon uh this is the uh meeting that is uh being held virtually it's pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 is extended this meeting will be conducted by remote mean members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance and members of the public is permitted, but every effort is being made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, and I need to advise everybody that um, this is being recorded. So it's a recorded meeting. And uh, with that, I'm going to um, go through the committee members present just to make sure that they can hear me and we can hear them. And uh, again, alphabetically, um, Lynn. Present. By last name, obviously. Uh, Matt. I would say Bob is next. Bob. I'm here. Matt. Also here. Thank you. Bernie. Present. Michelle. Present. And uh, Kathy. Yes, here. Okay, so uh, we'll keep an eye out for Alicia and I do not see her in the attendees group. So if she's, uh, if I, if she comes in there, I will let you know. Uh, Lynn, since you're um, maybe need to be the one that um, help her then at that point. Yep. Thanks. Uh, so um, that uh, being said, um, let's uh, continue with the uh, meeting. We also have two other members of the council present um, who are um, here because we do want to come back to the um, agenda item that we started last week on the residential property transfer fees proposal. And um, I want to, we will get to that uh, as our second major agenda item because I want to make sure that uh, we don't uh, feel constricted on time, but are also conscious of the fact that Mandy's chair of the CRC and they're meeting this afternoon later and she needs a break between meetings certainly to be able to get there so for all of those reasons it's uh we want to do that um the order of the agenda just so that everybody's aware of it and um then people can choose to <clears throat> drop out and come back a little later if they want is i'll do is quickly ask for public comment then we're going to discuss the draft of the guidelines and uh, then talk about the transfer fees and then the third and then the, la the, the last major item of the day is we want to talk about 457 Main Street um, property acquisition which was referred to the committee and uh, Dave Zomack and uh, Rob Moore are here but if they want to uh, don't want to listen to the rest, to the next section of the meeting. I'm sure if they take come back in half an hour um, or 45 minutes, uh, they're certainly saving probably at least an hour before we would get to that item. I would guess, but I can't be certain. Um, so, um, any questions about the um, agenda? And if not, I'm going to um, see there are a few, couple members of the public, or at least one member of the public present. Um, and I guess uh, when we get to that item, if uh, 
you might want to bring Rob Moore into the room too. Um, he's in the attendee group right now. Um, if any members of the public would like to make public comment, um, this is the time and please uh, raise your hand. I'm looking at the, uh, okay, there doesn't seem to be a request for public comment. So um, we'll go on to the uh, guidelines draft. <clears throat> it has been sent, it was sent to the committee for review. I believe it's in the packet also, the revised draft. And I want to thank Kathy for taking over the role of taking the prior version and the comments received at the council meeting and subsequently from counselors and uh, providing us with the draft. So I'm going to turn it over to Kathy to see if she has any introductory comments that she would like to make or and if not um how if you have a way that you like do you want to um take over and proceed through the draft or how would you like to do it kathy um anyway the committee wants to i don't you sent it to everyone in advance um so i'll just do a quick summary of what i did um uh, for the most part if someone sent a comment with added wording um that fit I just added it every once in a while more than one person sent a comment on the same section and so I I made an attempt to honor both of them um and uh the uh there were a couple places where there was a more significant change you know so just on this very first page to make it clear that we're not moving away from any of our policy goals. We're just um, picking where where the guidelines are focused in particular areas that are have financial implications. So uh, we just wrote them out uh, as up at the top. So that was just a clarity because it used to just say continue all our you know policies. Um, so um, Andy, I any way people want I. I, if people read it, um, they could ask questions. The other significant change, if you go to the next page, um, we wanted to make it clear, and, and I see in this version now we make it clear twice, but that we're saying um, there is a, a, a limit on tax revenues, and we're recommending against considering an override of an operating budget. So we wrote, wrote it very clearly in case anyone didn't get the message. Um, so we we put in both what two and a half does, but also um, that we are making a strong recommendation that we don't want to even consider it. Um, and then scroll to the next page. Um, we this the initial one you see on Cress and DEI. We wanted to emphasize that we were able to bring these programs in by extra money we had. Um, so that's why, as we go into 24, FY24 in future, when we lose that extra money, that's the tightening of the budget that we're facing. So we just added the that this was achievable because we had this extra money. Um, then I think. You know, we there was a clarification um, down at the bottom that it used to say major three major tax exempt institutions. We didn't really say that we went the higher education uh, thing. So we, that was just what were we talking about? Next page. I'm trying not to call out anything that's just purely. Sean broken. just put his hand up. Yep. Yeah, the one thing I would. Um suggest changing is the the first edit there fy23 include the addition of two new programs only achievable achievable by using 500,000 from a one time tr transfer so the 500,000 that we pulled from stabilization wasn't to support those new programs it was to support possibly having a, our first debt payment for the Jones library project um so i wouldn't i wouldn't combine those two those things are both accurate, but I want to combine the two and say that one contributed to the other. Um, so I, I, I would suggest thinking about that one and writing it a little bit different. Maybe we, just, we could just put a, 
a period after DEI, you know, my memory is we pulled we pulled money for the firefighters, then Sean as well. So um, we used we used ARPA funds for the firefighters and we used the stabilization fund as planned to, to put if we were going to have our first sort of uh, our first debt payment for the Jones Library project, which would have spiked our our capital spending. So um, we're, but it was not to start the DEI or CREST program. So I, think, I think you're right, put a period, I think it's good to note that. So put a period after CREST and DEI, I think is accurate that it, FY23 did include the addition of two new programs and then maybe rewriting the 500,000 just to say that it was, um, that did include 500,000 to support capital, I think would be a different way to, to say it. Okay. When I wrote the original, um, when you follow the um, logic through, the purpose of having that sentence there was to, because we were comparing 22 to 23, and uh, it was part of the 22-23 comparison, and that's why it was in there originally, and I think that uh, you could move it back to where it was and then put in um, DEI and CRESS as the next sentence in some way. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we'll fix that to make sure it's accurate. Michelle has her hand up. Yep, Michelle. Okay. Um, oh, I thought I lost the screen. Are we? Is it okay to make a comment on anything on this page right now? Well, if we stay just with this, um, okay. Um, but is is it about this? And if, if we're finished with this, then we can go to the next. So, you know. So, Sean, just so you could give us wording on this. But if we brought in ARPA money to help, and if the the point was. We were able to do some things because we had uh, money beyond uh, property tax revenue. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe you can just. Yeah, I'll send. I'll try to write it and send it to you, and then you can think about how to fold it in. Okay, so Michelle, go ahead. Okay, so this is on the last paragraph. Um, I just want to clarify: when you say you proposed no increase to state aid, you're talking to Paul there, or yes, the you yeah, that, okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. And I'm I'm not sure. Something about the word hope there is just not. <laughs> I, I don't. It feels a little off to me. Um, and I I'm not sure if that's that sort of language is used elsewhere in the document. But I see that you changed it from recognize to hope. So I just wanted to ask about that. Okay. The change. This was not my wording, but suggested wording. It was because recognize assumes they're going to do it. Uh, so this yeah. change that they, we hope they would do it. Um, and we can't actually, since they've made no statement about that, we, we can't even say they expect. Um, Can we say we would like? Like, I'm, I'm just wondering if we could be more proactive in our language as a, you know, like hope is sort of like, well, we hope it happens, but what we would like for it to happen. Is, is that... I mean, is that true well, that we would like? Well, this is. I mean, well, yeah, we could be more proactive, but this is. Um, anyone can give me a word here, but we could also just said, but we could just say, but, but, the governor elect. Uh, are may be likely, or may increase. The thing is, we don't know what they're going to do. Um, so anyone can suggest wording here. Lynn saw, Lynn saw I and, just I just suggested some wording, Kathy. Um, and I'm asking, are is is are we would we like for that to happen? Well, like seems to equally uh, anyone else can shout out. Um we would like the governor elect. Um we would urge the governor elect. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, the reality is this is not a document that's going to the governor. This is so, not going to the governor. Yeah, so what you could say also is, um, but we um, recognize the governor elect, he lean lieutenant governor elect Driscoll um, may support. Yeah, so if we may, change the our, if propose we change, increased state aid. Yeah, right. that sounds good. So if we go back to recognize and change our likely to may, it works just fine. Right. Thank you. Yes, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Kathy, do you have a document you're editing? Because for all of a sudden, I don't seem to be able to edit this. 
Um, I can, um, if I do my screen to open. Um, do you want me to? Yeah, please, because this is not a word. I don't have a word document up here. Oh, you you don't have a word document. Yes. Yeah, so if you want me, I can share my screen if I'm allowed to. Here they are. Yeah, I made it so you could. Okay. So you want me to take this down? You have to stop sharing then. I yes. Think. Got it. Is, is mine up on the screen now? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, I will capture, I will, the one other one we're fixing, so let me just get up to. Uh. Just but while you're at the very beginning, though, let me also say, you either need to not capitalize climate action or you need to capitalize all of the rest. You also need to fix the subject line. The subject line? Yeah, it's just FY23 budget policy guidelines. Yeah, that's right. Up at the very top. Oh, gosh. I no one caught that before, Barney. No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> my, my hand is still up for another matter, though. Okay, so let me just... Um, let me just get to, since now I'm a scribe, um, Sean's going to fix the one. So we recognize. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. And I think it was may, may propose because they don't support they propose. They're filing the bill. Okay. Okay. So, Bernie. We, we okay. may take this up again, or maybe it might be better to take this up when we get to Section 8, but we, we continue to insist that the higher institutions of higher education provide us with pilot payments. Um, I've tried to make the point, and maybe nobody agrees, that um, if you look at the Boston program, they give credit for community benefits. And it's oftentimes easier for a, an institution to, or the CFO of an institution to um, donate services, goods or services, than it is to write a check. So if we're, we're my, my point simply is if we're looking for assistance, we need to understand that the colleges, or the university in the colleges, may be able to provide us with beneficial activities. For example, Amherst College keeps a chunk of its property on the tax rolls. So, um, and that counts. I think, um, I don't know if it's still true, but at one point they were the largest taxpayer in town. Um, so again, if we're gonna, mm -hmm. when we get to section eight, we may want, and you reference the Boston program, there may, I would, would strongly suggest that we put in a line about, um, engaging in activities that benefit the community as well as uh, cash contributions. Okay, so when we get to that page, Bernie, those words were added, but you may want them to be added more strongly. So I'll point them okay. out to you. Let me, yeah, let me look again at section eight. And when see you get there's... to the end, they said okay. and community benefits, but but you may want them added more strongly. Should, okay. should we, should I, now I guess I'm the scroller. Um, so it's just- a, uh, Kathy, let me just, I can wait until later, but the state program actually is called pilots. Right. So I, we have to differentiate how we say that. Okay, so let's look at it later then because- mm -hmm. Fine. Um, you might wanna just mark that we want to make that part consistent with later. If you wanna send me this document, I can become the scribe. Okay. The so, other thing to know is though that uh, Pilot has also been used for proposed legislation, and this is not just recent, this is for many, many years, yeah. uh, to allow towns to require some sort of payment consistent with the statute. And, uh, you know, that's why I think the pilot keeps coming up in this fashion. 
Okay, so I'm just going to be hard for me to get out and send it and in. So I'll just good. so we'll just keep going. And um, the actual the word pilot means payment in lieu of taxation. So if we want to add other words, we have to add them later. So should I keep scrolling? Please. Okay, so there are a few places that it's wordsmithing. So just making clear that the budget committee would also that the finance committee is providing advice. We deleted um, a section that was later. You'll see it later. Um, okay, so on, on reparations, we changed the wording and I double checked it with Michelle so that we would address the concern that were we advocating for new policy? We just state that when we are um, considering the stabilization funds, after the free FY23 is stabilized, we will um, be uh, will be we will be need to consider the amount. So we just changed it to a simple statement. And Michelle, this is the language I shared with you that you gave me a thumbs up for. So, Michelle, your hand is up. Is that from before? I apologize. No, it's not, and the language is fine. I will take it down. Okay. So then on the next page. Uh, deleted, improved the rating because uh, this was actually a Lynn edit. It's highly unlikely that we can get a higher rating than AA plus. So we just get rid of the statement, um, not to. Andy, not just a quick heads up that Alicia has joined us. I just brought her into the room. Okay. Hey, Alicia, can you hear? Yes, thank you, Andy. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the major change on this page is BCG has already met. There was no recommendation to do anything else. So we just deleted the paragraph um, and inserted that we're good to go with two and a half for each of the major divisions percent increase. Um, um, I'm waiting to see, Sean has a hand up. Um, it was just in regards to the BCG I meeting. I think you're right. There was no recommendations. It did seem like there was a, a general consensus that um, operating budgets need more money. All operating budgets need more money, not just you know, not just the schools, but we talked about sort of the needs of the town and the library as well. Um, so it may be it's already kind of said throughout this document, um, but just it may be worth uh, clarifying that the, the sort of the consensus from that meeting was to put more money into operating budgets when we can. Or that, at least that was my my takeaway from that meeting. Yeah, so is it good enough for the committee, I think saying that yeah. given what's going on, even living within this is a very tight operating budget. So, um, you know, rather than saying if there's more money, put it into operating, but that would be, you know, we're, this is a council document. So um, are we saying that, should money become available, we want to put it into operating, but which is what that would imply. Um, yeah. I'm just looking to land. land I'm Andy. actually more comfortable with the way it's stated here. And because adding what Sean just suggested, I mean, I think it that goes without saying. And we did it this past year when we had money as we closed out the year. I just don't think we want to hold out that hope all the time that we're going to be giving everybody increases. Okay, so I'm going to leave as is unless I hear more. Um, I, I noticed when I read this, there's a typo here. We recognize multiple fronts require a multi-year. It says multiple, so I'll fix that. It will Thank require. You. This 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 was supposed to go out. but. The point here, and this was one we talked about, that um, we're just advising on next year's budget, so not everything can get accomplished in one year, and we rel realize that some of these are multi-year strategy and that we have to live within available revenue. So this was kind of a restatement of what we've said multiple times, um, not, much, not much of a change. So Kathy, I can't, I don't have a raise hand function. Okay. Just that oh, I can let me there. just go up to where the yellow is. Yep. They are now town manager goals is the way um, uh, GOL is going. 
And so in the top yellow, at the top of the screen where it says council and town manager goals right there, yep. it just should say town manager goals. Capitalize the G. Yep. Oh, we're going to do a real word edit here. Okay. Okay. And then uh, with the uh, second yellow FY. Yep. That's fine. Okay. Just stop me if I'm scrolling too fast. So what was added on this page, we talked about it, that we might need to do a salary study this year to inform the next year budget. And at least one committee member said, well, should the schools do one? And I think, Sean, you said the schools may have done one already. So I we put both pieces in here on a maybe we need to do this. Um, and this was, everyone said, you know, if there's a big change mid-year, it's going to come back, but it's also going to come back to the finance committee. So it's just, that was that wording was missing before. So that's all that other red is. Yeah. Um, we had a statement that the operating, once the schools are consolidated, they're going to save money. So we're going to see this hopefully in 2026. But we haven't decided who's going to benefit. I mean, clearly the town benefits from it, but it questioned. So that that sentence was just added as, I think, a reminder. The next paragraph just reminds people that the capital improvement plan includes a joint capital advice planning committee. And, and we added, and this is a strong statement, every single piece of capital, buildings, improvements, vehicles, um, are being talked about with a climate lens in that. So that was added to make it clear that we are we are doing that and the town is doing that. Um, um, most of these others, this was, we added town recreational fields and land mm -hmm. in the last discussion, but we add the clarifying that the regional schools has a separate process. So that that is a different process for those playing fields. So this is just, making sure the long list on the capital inventory and multi-year plan includes fields. Okay, budget process. This was Lynn nicely caught that um, we have to swear in the new counselors before they get to do anything. It's not just inauguration. So those are wording changes on when the new counselors get involved. Management performance goals. Okay, we call it the town manager's goals. Uh, the, the so keep it town manager manager's goals. Okay. Okay. Then we added. Um, this was, I can't even remember who. Uh, it was me, the semi annual. This, yeah, the, you know, that we don't want to just get an end of the year report. We want to get a mid year report. So it was semi annually. Um, uh, so okay, let me, uh, maybe I didn't say it right then. The problem with this amount of money that UMass pays, uh, the, universe, the university pays the schools, is that was set on a figure that was figured out about. Four years ago, it's never been reevaluated. My guess is the cost per pupil may have gone up, and that should be reevaluated at least every other year. Okay, so, so it's not semi annually; it's um, other year, every other year, right? And as far as I know, we've not ever asked for a reevaluation of that. And now that they're back in North Village, I think it's appropriate to think about that. Okay, so now we're in the um, clarifying that S Smith made a gift and it was a multi-year gift. And this is Bernie, Bernie where I added the um, <clears throat> consider actions that could benefit the community in addition to financial support. And later yeah. we added again. Um, I see it once. Okay, maybe I'm okay. misreading this, but, but uh, in the <laughs> sentence here, they need to avoid actions to compete with businesses and to consider actions to benefit. 
that the, the benefits to the community and uh, consider act actions that could benefit the community, that I really think that needs to stand as a separate sentence as it reads now. It's like, you know, um, don't compete with us and do nice things, but do nice things. Um, it, you know, so, so that um, um, that and that that should be somewhere. Okay, it appears later. Let me just show you the other okay. place. All right. Okay, so maybe it doesn't appear strongly. Right. I, I, yeah, uh, I, I also have qualms about they need to uh, avoid actions that compete with businesses. Uh, is that aimed at UMass's food service? It is. Yes. Um, and we we put that in last year. Yeah. Um, because there was a real concern when they started catering in town, um, mm -hmm. not just not just that people were going to eat there, but bringing. Right. Well, you know, there's also 30 Boltwood. Um, so, so I, I'm, I mean, I think if we have a challenge with UMass catering, we should say we have a challenge with UMass catering and not paint that with a broad brush. Okay. I think typically I think they don't, I mean, typically the colleges, you know, the, the, the schools don't compete other than UMass catering, as far as I know. Um, well, some of the bookstores would say that when they, you know, they don't they don't use our bookstores anymore for textbooks either. Yeah, yeah. well, that was that was a fact. Yeah, you know, it's the faculty has that problem. Um, so, so does anyone else? This is this may be the only place. I think Thirty Boltwood is actually taxed. Um, the whole hotel is. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's taxed, and the restaurant's taxed. And, but, but I mean, you, you know, that's a business that competes with other restaurants in town. Um, <clears throat> well, I think of it as business in town. So anyone, I'm just waiting to see um, this community in addition to, was it's also been added to the town manager goals to seek financial support and community benefits. So we, okay. we do uh, parallel uh, some here uh, in the goals. No, that's fine then. I'll, I'll, that I'll, I'll, let it, I'll let it be. Okay. And... <clears throat> Then this on the last page, it's um, so this was to make it clear that we're talking about the pilot payments we get on state owned land and new legislation that opens the door to leverage uh, for leverage to negotiate pilot agreements with uh, for leverage. So this was added to make both of these clear that they both would require a change. The charter requires a change, and this other formula is not benefiting us. So this was suggested both by counselors, and then we discussed it. And that's it. There aren't a huge number. I would say there are very few substantive changes here. They were clarifying sentences. Yeah. Let me just, I, I think we're ready to take this to the council. I, I mean, there's a few changes. Kathy, we can probably get those um, finished up and bring it in on by Monday and um, and put it in the packet tomorrow. Michelle has her hand up though. Michelle? To make sure from Paul about the goal priorities um, being maybe somewhat off from or, yeah. or needing I'm to have some more consistency. Okay, Go Michelle, you know I was going to mention that next. And since your vo your uh, voice is not coming through clearly, so I'll mention that. But th this is a document that basically says, here's the financial picture. The problem we're now running into with the goals is, and CRC has been working very diligently on these. Goals. The goals imply the expenditure of money that the financial guidelines basically say we don't have. So for example, um, and, and you know, I hate, to, the bottom line is we can't go out and print more money. Uh, and so the, the real discussion is going to have to be on the goals. And at GOL the other day, um, 
we're pretty sure that the goals document is not going to come back to the council for final approval until January 9th. And Paul, the other night during our council meeting, nodded and basically said that was okay. But there's some conversations that are going to have to take place about the areas in the goals that ask for essentially new resources or new uh, or more staff time than it's perceived that we have. So Michelle and I, and maybe Andy, to some extent, need to decide how to bring that conversation to the council as we firm up the goals. But I don't see how we can change a financial guidelines based on what is said here, because what is said here is the real picture of our finances. And the issue with the goals is going to be a matter of making some tough choices. And they are tough. They're very tough choices. So I, I think it's a little bit Go on, Andy, but I was just saying that if we could finalize this document, that other discussion can happen. And I think the other discussion, it would be good to repeat this table that I just did, that this is our budget. This is the revenues. And they're, aside from grants that other, that can be brought in, um, we've only got $2 million more than we had last year to work with. This is it. <laughs> And, you know, so that's the context, Lynn, that, that the town manager goals has to operate in where, right. anything, where anything needs money. There are things he can do that don't require money. Right. Right? Exactly. So I, I personally, or as a counselor on this committee, I feel that this is ready to come to the council with a few of the tweaks that we've discussed today. And... I think to bring it to the council on Monday would be a very strong move. So Andy, I'm turning this back to you to chair. Um, okay. So um, I will save that. I'm gonna save this document and I will double check it for typos or duplicate words. Um, but otherwise I'm not making any more changes to it. You know, we've got the one, you know, a double check. Sean's going to give me a sentence that we don't have yet. Um, and then I'll share it back. So I'm going to do file save. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Uh, no, what I was going to say, as far as the interrelationship with the goals, we made a decision early on in this process that we were not going to attempt in this document to set priorities for um, policy, that that was going to be left to the other discussion, and that we were going to talk about the financial reality and then try and bring in the council separate process by reference only because um, for us to make that decision was, was going to uh, make the uh, the whole discussion of the guidelines much more complicated than it needed to be. And so I, I think that we've gone the right direction. It is important to council remember. And the only thing that I had thought about this morning, and I brought this up to Lynn earlier today in a different context, but uh, the Fed has made the point very strongly that the reason that they keep jacking up interest rates is because uh, the average increase in the goal um, of the Fed has been over the last years, 2% per year increase in inflation and 2% uh, inflation limit and to try and manage towards that goal. And that currently inflation is three times as much. Well, when you put that together with the, uh, uh, Proposition two and the two and a half percent limit, um, you know, it's the same reality that's bumping into each other. And so this isn't just an Amherst problem, but uh, I don't, I'm not sure that it's worth adding anything to our guidelines at this point um, about that. I may just 
say it at the meeting when we present. Well, and that. Andy, we do we do say inflation has come back in. So there's a sentence. I don't think we. Bernie's got his hand up. Yeah. Well, um, I American City and County, which I don't think is published anymore, used to publish a uh, municipal uh, inflation rate. And municipalities have a higher rate of inflation than the um, consumer price index because of how we operate and what we buy. So if the uh, uh, you know if the nominal inflation CPI is supposed to be two percent, uh, cities and towns are typically looking at a point point and a half higher. Um, and that was the uh, that was the intent behind two and a half. And by the way, Citizens for Limited Taxation is dissolving itself. Um, you know, the intent was to starve the beast by setting a rate uh, budget or a budget increase that was impractical. And we've dodged that in a number of ways. But um, uh, there's nothing sacred about about two and a half. I, um, I think we need to make the point that, um, you know, we're, we're, we're looking more of an inflation, uh, at, likely at a higher inflation rate than the consumer price index for one. And for two, I, I think that Lynn's suggestion is a really good one that, um, uh, you know, it's frustrating to me to look at, to be on the finance committee and then to look at goals, which require the town manager to spend money that just ain't there. So uh, uh, that's it. So either Lynn or I can just say that when we introduce the topic at the council meeting on Monday. That would be so fine. I think what would be in order at this point is a motion to uh, accept the revisions uh, and uh, forward them to the council um, with the committee's recommendation. So moved. Is there a second? I second. Okay, so the motion's been made and seconded, uh, and uh, I don't know if Athena, are you still taking notes, or do you have the motion? Yes, I am. I'm here. And you have um, the motion. I, I do. It, um, would it be acceptable if I just added the budget guidelines, the, the title of the document, so that's included in the motion? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so... Everybody knows what the motion is. It's uh, essentially ex um, that we're accepting the changes and forwarding it to the council and with our recommendation to um, uh, adopt the guidelines. And I'm going to call for a vote. I'll go back with the same list. Um, Lynn? Uh, support. I mean, uh, yes. <laughs> oh, Bob? Support. Uh, Matt. Support. Uh, Bernie. Support. Michelle. Aye. Uh, Kathy. Yes. I'm a yes. Alicia. Abstain. Okay, so the vote is um, of council members four to zero with one abstention and um, three resident members of the committee supporting. So um, with that, I think that we have completed our work on the uh, guidelines and can go on to the next agenda item, which is the uh, going back to the discussion of the special act on residential property transfer fees and Mandy and Anna are um, in the meeting again for the purpose. Um, I think we have the same um, problem that we had last time that there's a quorum of the council present and um, we have been advised that um, the member, the two sponsors um, are here, can answer questions, but cannot participate in deliberations because of the open meeting law. And um, so 
but I think that what I'm, as I said before, a lot of what we're going to talk about today is uh, going to be process. And um, I don't know if, um, Lynn, do you want to start this out or shall I? Because both of us have had um, communications with uh, Representative Dom and Senator Comerford. As has Anna, who was part of the meeting with Represent Representative Dom and uh, Senator Comerford. Um, in order for us to go forward on this, we would have to file special legislation. In order to file special legislation, the council needs to vote and then we need to forward that. Representative Dom has and Comerford both have particularly urged us to do that if we're going to go forward to do that sooner rather than later, because there are similar bills coming forward from other towns, largely from Eastern Mass, which is a point I want to get to in a moment. And that she foresees that the bills would probably have hearings at the same time and that there might then be an attempt to merge them into one bill. But the main thing is that we need to be at the table of the discussions that are going on with the Eastern Mass towns. And one of the reasons is the following. If we're going to go forward with this, the Eastern Mass towns want to set a sale limit of 2 million. Well, we don't have houses in Western Mass except for a per particular one I can think of that sell for 2 million, okay? And so we really need to be at the table so we can talk about how do you set a price based on the cost of housing where it's being levied? That's number one. And um, the other piece, and, and now I, I, so anyway, that bottom line with regard to all of that is, we need to decide if we're going forward, we need a vote here, we need a vote in the council, we need some language, and we need to be at the table with the other um, communities that are thinking about this that, and that are filing legislation. Anna, would you have anything else to add to that? No, I do have um, some things that I, I think respond to the some of the questions that we got last week, if that's... Um, if it's okay, Andy or, or Sean, if I can share my screen. Well, let's 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 hold on for a second if it's okay. not directly related to the process no. that Lynn has introduced. Nope, nothing, not not necessarily, other than to reiterate the that there is time pressure on this, that we want to get this yeah. in uh, early. Yeah, let's hold it. I will come back to that this in, in a few minutes, but let's stick with this. And I just wanted to uh, say that. I've had communications with uh, Representative Dom, which are um, obviously consistent with what she reported to the two of you. And uh, she was uh, did not give a particular date, but you know, I sort of got the impression, you know, it was sort of as soon as we can, it doesn't have to be at the beginning of the session, but it shouldn't be delayed. And uh, I sort of took that to mean try and do something in January because we have no idea when the hearings will be set. Um, and uh, so I think that was pretty much what I got out of it, which sounds consistent with what the two of you had. So I just wanted to set, report that. Kathy, you have your hand up. Yeah, I do. Um before we get into the substance of what this would do or any concerns about it, if we we're talking about the asking for legislation, would the legislation, and you all know the wording, I'm sure by, by heart, would this give us the option to do this, but not say we are definitely doing it? So if we have the option to do it, then we could be reporting out of finance that we want to can we want to be able to explore this, which would require legislation if we ever want to do it, and the timing is such that we need to move this before the language of what we might want to do in our own bylaw, and that would make me a lot more comfortable that we have time then 
to talk about what we started talking about last time, unintended consequences, um, and how you could address this or that, which seemed to me, I mean, Mandy had some quick, very good answers that we dealt with that in this wording of the bylaw, or we dealt with that in this wording of the bylaw, but we don't have to focus on that right now if we're basically saying this is enabling legislation, which is different than I think about the ranked choice voting where we were asking, we say, I'm going to do it. So right. we put this worded in a way. And then my second thought, given what you just said, Lynn, if, if a dollar figure goes in that fits Eastern Mass better than it would fit any Western Mass municipality, that legislation would have to allow for different kinds of, you know, if we go in as a group, it would have to be worded in a way that said in however, you know, <laughs> in outside of Eastern Boston, people could set their own limits or something, you know, I mean, it would give permission. So I don't, I don't know where the flexibility is in, in that wording. So that's kind of a question because I don't have the draft in front of us. So is it permissive as opposed to saying we're going to do it? And secondly, do we, uh, around the, at what at what point does this trigger? And Mandy, you had said avoid specifics, or you, Anna, said avoid specifics in the legislation to leave us free to make those decisions at the bylaw level. So I don't know where the $2 million, so that's a question, and I'll take my hand out. Okay, I'm, I'm just going in order that hands went up, as according, uh, so Mandy is next, and I, you know, you know, we have to be, please be mindful of the um, warning we have from Athena about not deliberating. Yeah, no, I just wanted to answer um, Kathy's question, which is section one, the very first sentence. So it is enabling le legislation, and I'll just read the first sentence, which says, except or otherwise exempt, the city, the town of Amherst may, by bylaw, impose a fee of up to 2%. So not only did we, we in the bylaw, make it enabling um, in, in this special act, make it enabling so that the council would have to actually enact the bylaw for the fee to go in. We actually gave the discretion to enact a bylaw that does a half a percent or 1% or one and a half or two, two. Okay. two. That, that answers my question. And the reason I ask that is because I don't have enough information to focus on the bylaw. So I wanted to deal with that in a separate session and some of the information we asked you for on a, I need time to think about it, um, but that didn't apply to this if it's enabling. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle? Yeah, I was just, um, given we're not on this, if we move forward with it, it sounds, we, we wouldn't be seeking the local approval through a town-wide vote. We're doing it through the council. And so I think it will be really important to uh, try to educate the public about this. Uh, and I know that Anna and Mandy will be way on top of that, but just in terms of, you know, combating concerns um, and giving the public the ability to uh, provide input on this. Uh, because as I understand it, it would go to a council meeting and of course it would be on the agenda and folks could come and provide public comment. Um, but how are we actually letting the town know um, more broadly that this is something that we are moving forward with? Uh, because I do think getting, getting or giving the public the opportunity to uh, weigh in on this is important. Okay, thank you. I um, that was consistent with what my thinking was, but I'll come to that later. I'm just going to keep going. Um, Anna, you're muted though. Got it, got it, got it. Sorry. I wanted to respond to the second part of um, Kathy's question, which really is about the need for us to come in with our home rule right off the bat is because we don't want to get lumped in. Um, so we're not, we're not pitching the combination of all these transfer fee that uh, transfer fee legislation, all this transfer fee legislation. Oof. Um, it also is just to throw a quick plug in for Senator Comerford's bill, 
Uh, it is in support of bills like hers that would remove the need for this to be special legislation in the future and would enable towns to set their own fees, um, not based on a $2 million mark, but based on, you know, up to 2% based on how they, um, how they figure it. So that's why, that's one of the reasons why it's important to get this in soon is that we don't want all of the Eastern states or Eastern cities, seriously, I don't know what, why my brain has left my body. We don't want all of them to come in with that 2 million or higher mark. Um, and I have a table that shows where different, different cities and towns are at um, and have that become the standard, right? We, we need to demonstrate that it's different. And that's also one of the reasons why Mandy and I left the, the proposed flexibility for um, the percentage that it's based on as well, because we need to make sure that we're meeting the market um, where it's at and not doing something that's ridiculous, but that will all be discussed in the bylaw. Lynn? Um, to answer the question about public input, Michelle, I think that's critical. I also think we need to do something similar for the sewer and water regs and bylaws. We haven't really held a community forum like CRC has been doing uh, with the rental bylaw. And I think we need to do that with this and also with that. The second thing is I really like the idea that we have flexibility at the local level. And I, of the various comments that were made last time, and I, I actually can debate since I'm on the committee. Um, I was really taken by Bob's point that you know, here I am, I've saved all my life, all of my savings are in my house, and now you want 2% as I try to retire on what I have put in my house. And so I'm hoping that at the local level, we can come up with some way to accommodate um, for those people where that is what they have um, without getting too nosy into their personal finances. Um, and then the other thing is, I what I'm assuming, and Anna, you just addressed this, and basically that is that this would be a statewide law. We want to just make sure that the statewide law is written with the flexibilities that we need so that it fits for our community. So thank you. Bernie? Uh, this is going to be a heavy lift because there'll be uh, many, many groups out there that will find ways to oppose this or try to limit it. So it's important that we get in before the late filing deadline, and it's important that we're at the table. Um, I'm not as concerned about, you know, the, uh, the, the poor per the person who's had a house for 50 years and is now being asked to give up 1% of it, because I think if I understand it's 1% from the seller, 1% from the, the, the buyer. Um, you know, and it, I'd like to be able to have this, the ability to customize this in some way, manner, or form. And again, I just think it's important that we're at the table and I, I'd like to move forward with this. This is not going to solve in itself. It's not going to solve our affordable housing program, but I think it's a, a, a piece. It's a component that we need to have in place. Okay. Since everybody has been called on once, I'll, uh, say a couple things and then go back to the people whose hands are up. Um, one is you used the term late filing and uh, we have been advised that late filing does not apply under current rules to um, home rule petitions. Home rule petitions can currently be filed at any time. Late filing doesn't apply. The, the deadline is only applying to other bills other than um, local requested option type things as this is. Uh, so I just wanted to clarify that because that was very explicit in Representative Tom's email responding to me. Um, and uh, the um, <clears throat> question that she also very strongly addressed was the, sing the single bill um, that uh, she, I think, is very concerned that not combining into a single bill will lose um, the option to get a, a, a special bill through, <clears throat> that um, we uh, need 
that our strongest chance of getting permission to do what we want to do if there's going to be an, um, a bill for multiple communities is to be a part of that bill that going separate is not an advisable strategy and uh, you know you may want to pursue that further with her directly if you feel you need clarification but um, I don't um, I think that uh, um, what she said what I understood her to say makes sense from what my experience in working with the legislature over quite a number of years in my legal aid work um, so I guess uh, back to Mandy. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to add one thing, um, which was an update. Uh, as we met with you last meeting, we said we were going in front of the housing trust that week. And the housing trust voted to support this, but with one change, which was to section three regarding the remainder of funds after the 250,000. And they voted to support it um, with the addition of themselves as one of three places that the remainder of the funds would go per a bylaw, allocated as a bylaw. Um, so I just thought I'd update the committee on that. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. If this um, were to become a statewide, so if, the, if this were to pass statewide, because um, I'm taking Lynn's point and an honest point, I think about you know, what happens in Eastern Mass is very different than what's happening here. So does our does our home rule petition just go away or how does how do, what happens to our home rule petition if it's in process or if it's already been approved, if then a state approval on this happens? A couple of things I would say in response to that. Um, one is, is that um, if a home rule petition is filed from um, a number of communities, which is what it, um, could be happening, and there's a proposal for a statewide omnibus bill to address all communities, they just wouldn't act on the local bills. They would only act on the, on the one that falls out of the committee process which would then be the um, omnibus bill to cover all communities. So uh, that's why it's important, however, that we get our bill in and which then gives us a seat at the table essentially. And uh, secondly, that we um, get into the bill, things that we feel strongly should be there um, into our local, into what we ask them, what we ask Mindy to file on our behalf, even if it may not um, come out in exactly that fashion. So it sort of gives us the ability to say, this is what we would like it to be. Um, and, uh, you know, it doesn't take away the opportunities to get input at an appropriate point down the line, as you indicated, or make further changes as we adopt the bylaw. So, Anna. Could, oh, could I just quickly follow up and maybe Anna will be able to answer this. Would that be okay, Andy? Yes. Okay, just a quick follow up. In the other communities where this has already passed, are they using the same system where the bylaw in the municipality dictates the details of the program or is, is there some other model that's used in those communities? I can answer that, Andy. If, yeah, if, go ahead. Okay, so um, I wanted to first back up just for a second. Uh, the legislation that Joe filed is to allow communities to opt to do this. So I don't know that it would necessarily undo if we if ours passed. Um, I don't know that it would necessarily undo what we had. It's um, it's basically just saying that communities don't have to do a home rule in the future. Um, it's it would be more similar to um, CPA, right, where you opt in versus needing to go through the legislature. Uh, that's my understanding of of her bill. And if folks have a different understanding, that's fine. I um, and, and we are in support of that. The only difference is that her bill has the full amount going to um, affordable, and ours gives us flexibility. 
Uh, so that's that's one of the differences there. Um, if it's okay to answer Michelle's second question, may I share my screen? Sure. Okay. If uh, I can't, I can. Linda's do it. the yeah. one who's uh, controlling that. All right. So um, these are communities who have. Uh, past home rule petitions that are awaiting state approval. So Boston, Concord, Somerville, Brookline, uh, Provincetown, Chatham, Cambridge, Arlington, and Nantucket. And Martha's Vineyard has received state approval. Um, and then Barnstable County imposes a local transfer charge as well as a, a state transfer fee. So you can see there are a number who have submitted this um, and are awaiting state approval. Um, our estimation is that these, these cities and towns will once again submit. Um, in the next session. And um, just to show you, this is my really quick, I know it's not full, but, um, and you're seeing where I have question marks because I'm still trying to confirm things, but bear with me, this was, this is a quick job. So just to show you what folks are proposing, Boston, it's up to 2% on properties over 2 million. Somerville, it's 2%, I believe on all uh, properties, but it does not apply to owner occupied. So it's 2% on all non-owner occupied properties. Um, those are both split between the buyer and seller. Nantucket and Provincetown both have a half a percent fee on all properties, um, except I believe in Nantucket, it's only the amount over 2 million. Uh, Concord has a 1% on properties over 600,000. Cambridge has, yeah, sorry. You don't, you don't need to read them all. Yeah. Uh, well, I wasn't sure if folks were on their phones and couldn't see the screen, Kathy. Oh. I wanted to make sure they, they had it. Um, so Cambridge is 2% over 1 million. Arlington has a lot of flexibility in theirs, somewhere between 0.05% and 2%. Um, and then they go by the state median. Um, Brookline has a 2% over 500,000 uh, on the amount over and Chatham has a half a percent over 2 million. So there's a variety here, but the reason why these are all accessible to me to pull is that they put their amounts in their home rule. So our structure is different. Um, we are giving ourselves flexibility. These cities and towns um, have, you know, they've given themselves some flexibility. Most of them say up to, you know, 2% or between a certain percentage, but it's in their home rule. So they're, they're kind of boxed into that um, for lack of a better term. So we, we are unique from all my accounting in terms of how we have structured ours to give the, the local, to give ourselves more um, ability to flex as needed within, our, within the demands of our town. Um, okay, I'll continue on, thank you. Uh, that's helpful, Lynn. You're muted, Lynn. I'd like to move us to the discussion on process about what is our next steps, because I'm watching the hour and Mandy Joe's going to have to go real soon. And so are we as a finance committee basically saying at our next meeting, we'll start looking at what and how do we want to proceed? Um. I mean, I have some thoughts on that. So maybe I should just say it is that uh, I think we definitely need to move into what it is that we want to file. The question that we're, you know, sitting here and getting into the debate on whether the home rule uh, petitions will disappear if there's an omnibus bill and uh, the important, it doesn't really matter because we still get to the point that all of these bills and our, will affect our ability to be at the table and to lobby for the provisions that we think are important, including that it not be all for affordable housing, for example. So uh, it's a, uh, uh, I think that what we really want to do is at our next meeting move to the discussion of what should be in the bill to file and um, what we want to recommend to the council. The council in the end will have to make the decision as to what it wants to file, to propose to file and whether to propose to file. Uh, but uh, we want to um, try and get it back to the council uh, so that the council can act in January. Uh, that would be my thought, which would mean 
that we would probably want to um, have public comment generally limited to uh, what public comment takes place at meetings that are relevant or, or any meeting actually, and uh, uh, have a more formalized process later. But that would be my suggestion. It's obviously up to larger group. Um, so, Anna, did you have anything else? Because your hand is still up yes. and, uh, and Kathy was next. I re-raised it um, because I did have an answer to one of the questions from the last meeting that I wanted to just get to briefly, um, which is first off, there's a there's some really wonderful resources that I'm happy to send you, Andy, as chair. That um, if folks are looking to do some light uh, academic reading, that um, they can they can dig into some studies that have been done. Uh, but the lit review that I did um, basically boils down to this quote that I found, which is though such a tax could marginally impact transactions in the high end of real estate of the real estate market. It is unlikely to have a noticeable impact on other housing transactions because buyers of higher priced real estate have preferences very different different from those uh, from those of other home buyers. Um, these studies tended to find that there is an incentive once these fees are passed to because 38 other states just allow this without needing to go through all these processes. Um, so there are significant. This is there's there is data on this. So. Um, the the studies found that there is incentive to sell below the threshold uh, or be below the cutoff and that above the threshold listed prices tended to fall a little bit um it, it, however most of the research is actually not necessarily all aligned with itself right so there's different case studies that show you know toronto there was much more of a significant decline um, in DC, there was an insignificant effect. There was, there was essentially no effect. Um, so there's, there's varying information, which for me and for uh, at least one of the papers indicates that the flexibility based on your location is really important. So being able to um, municipal, the ability for municipalities to adjust based on their market conditions as they see this going forward is very important. So reiterating the need for um, this to be regulated by bylaw uh, so that we can adjust based on market conditions. And I'm, I will send uh, these to, to you to send out to the committee if that's okay, Andy. Um, yeah, I'm uh, also going to ask you about uh, what you showed earlier with the other towns yep. research. And uh, you know, I think the question that I'm going to have to check with Athena about is that uh, she may feel that since you showed it at the meeting, we need to put it in the packet. I'm fully prepared for that. Uh, and and if I hadn't been doing it 15 minutes before the meeting, it would already be to you to be in the packet. But I was working on this right before the meeting. So yes, I'll send Thank it. Thank you. And I appreciate you doing that. Kathy. Um, I'm, I'll make it short. Land, Andy, I agree with what you said and what Lynn said earlier. And I think our next meeting is still it's on the 20th. Um, I would like to just focus on the proposed uh, piece that we would be sending forth to the legislature um, and uh, and have the discussion be pretty short because I feel like we've gotten a fair amount of information that we could put more information in this, but we didn't um, because I think moving that forward, there's a longer discussion and Anna, I, Anna, I really want those resources to decide whether we wanna do this but to leave the door open to the possibility of doing it and being at the table, I think it's important. So I don't think it's a long discussion is actually where I am on this. And it's partly when Lynn, you're gonna be able to bring it back to the council. Um, but I think if we just focus on that rather than the bylaw, I'm much more comfortable with uh, a short discussion and focus to, to then move it. Um, that's my opinion. Okay, let me ask you one question, Kathy. Would it? Would you also agree to have the discussion starting with and framed by the legislation that was drafted by Mandy and Anna uh, that began the process, uh, so that we work off of it? Ab absolutely, because I think it, I don't want to start from scratch. Um, you know, so the only thing I, Lynn has her hand up on this, 
you know, the a quick discussion on we already heard if we looked at other versions, they put more detail into it. But I would just want anything that is uh, significant that's in the wording to be flagged beyond the first sentence, which Mandy just read to us. So I just would want it flagged um, so that we didn't say, oh, this all looks good. You know, if there's there's some interesting tidbit in there. Lynn? Yep, I'm just suggesting that in the packet for next week, we have that draft. We also have what Anna just showed us. We have a copy of Joe's legislation uh, and um, that we focus our discussion on where we wanna make sure that any state legislation creates the flexibility for us. Yep. Okay. okay. So and then we would target to bring this to the council on the 9th of January, maybe. If okay. not, it's not until the 23rd. Okay. Okay. So, but we will try for the 9th is our initial target and make adjustment if necessary. And I want to emphasize a couple things. One is that uh, to remember that the proposed legislation is in the packet from the last meeting a week ago. So that um, there was on January 6th, I believe. I think it's in that packet. Uh, there's also in there a possible bylaw um, that is not subject to discussion now. We're really focusing on the, on the legislation only. So if you're looking and spending time at it, of course, it'd be appreciated, but stick to the bylaw. And, uh, it's easy to stick to, stick to the legislation not the bylaw. Michelle? Yeah, just one more quick thing. Um, so I and I know that Mandy and Anna are super like smart ab about all of this and have probably already looked into this, but it's interesting that all of the other communities that Anna just shared with us are using aren't using this model that you're proposing, which clearly gives a lot more flexibility. Um, so I'm just wondering if there's like if it's worth just looking into, you know, whether there's any problem with the model that we're trying to use here, or maybe you already have. Um, but it's just curious to me, not that I don't think that, you know, I, I think that, you know, it's not to dismiss your creativity um, in terms of having coming up with this, but to say that it's interesting that no other community has chosen a similar model. And I'm just like questioning why. Does that, you know, like, so do we know for sure that this model is a model, meaning this, the, the home rule with the bylaw, do we know for sure that that's a model that can work for this? Can I respond, Andy? Yes, go ahead. Uh, so, I mean, nothing is for sure, but we mm -hmm. have spoken to both Joe and Mindy about this approach and they did not see um, any problems for, for us to shift up our approach necessarily. But I hear you. I mean, we are doing it differently because, you know, we're special, but uh, <laughs> that's what I was trying to get at. I hope you yeah. heard that. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, I think that it's, it's, it's more so, I think we've, we believe that this method works best for our community. And so we have to be true to what we believe is going to be best for our community. And so, uh, you know, that's, that's why we took this approach and um, I, we haven't spoken to the other communities, but I am in touch with uh, someone from the local housing local housing option coalition um, to, to talk through and we're hoping to connect in the next week or so. So, um, but our, our, our legislators are aware that this is our approach and did not, did not see it as a problem. Awesome, thank you. Of course. Okay, anything else? So I don't think we need action because this is a process quite, we've been discussing process so this isn't substantive. I don't think we need a motion. If anybody wants to offer a motion, of course they're entitled to, but I don't think it's necessary. I don't think we need a motion. We've just said, here's the agenda for next meeting, right? Yeah, uh, we'll come to the whole question of next meeting um, after we, to the next agenda item. So I want to um, 
uh, get onto Dave's own Mac uh, if uh, and take up the the uh, proposed um, purchase of land at, uh, on 457 Main Street uh, because I know that there's that's a time crunch issue also. Um, so anything else on this? Uh, Andy, I've been made aware that there is a person who came into the audience late and would like to make public comments specifically on this. Okay. Um, since Anna's still here, I think that Mandy had to drop out because of her other meeting, but Anna's still here. If there is a person, since we offered public comment earlier and there was none, I'll come back to public comment. That, the public comment in this case is about the VFW yeah, if, purchase. Um, about the VFW the, purchase, not this. Oh, the VFW purchase. purchase. Never mind. Then uh, get to it in a second. Um, so on okay. it's the the public comment apparently is not about the. Transition. That's okay. People want to talk to me normally anyway. It's all right. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm going to thank you all. Hi, thank you. Uh, Andy, if I mean Rob and I are fine if if, if you want to take this public comment before we we go, that's fine too. It's it's up to you. Why don't you introduce the um, purchase plan? I don't know if you or Sean were going to do this, but. Um, they, I think that the, what, uh, we, we had a good introduction at the council meeting. I have forwarded that material to all members of this committee since not every member is a counselor. And uh, so, and I think it was pretty self-explanatory when you take the totality of the documents. The uh, thing that was wanted to make clear is um, the funding mechanism which either you or Sean or Rob can talk about so sure well I think you know I'm joined by Rob Mora tonight and you know we could just quickly um I, I don't unless you want us to we, we could go through the PowerPoint or if the if the committee has the PowerPoint that's fine you you, you probably many of you saw that at the um uh, uh, council meeting, but happy to just go through this quickly. Um, as everyone knows, you know, we we have been uh, fortunate to have our partners, Craig's Doors, providing sheltering in our community for over 10 years. The town has supported um, Craig's Doors in, in various ways through the years with staff support as well as financial support. Um, in all of those years, Craig's Doors has been um, fortunate to find uh, locations at various uh, houses of worship and they're currently um, um, uh, at the um, Emmanuel Lutheran Church on North Pleasant Street and, and also uh, renting rooms at the University Motor Lodge. Um, um, about a year and a half ago or so as part of uh, the town manager's goals, uh, uh, working with Paul Bachman, uh, Rob and I began to look at properties uh, throughout town uh, with, with the goal of trying to find uh, a location that might be a fit for a uh, permanent shelter. Um, the the uh, uh, industry standard now, what is happening in communities all throughout Massachusetts as well as New England is many of these facilities are combining um, both a place for sheltering as well as permanent supportive housing. Projects like this are happening all over Eastern Mass. Um, uh, right here in the Valley, we have um, uh, various nonprofits working in Springfield, Northampton, and Greenfield to do very similar things uh, to what Amherst is proposing here at 457 uh, Main Street. And maybe um, if I could turn it over to Rob just for a quick summary of, of uh, why, why, why the VFW site. Uh, again, I want to acknowledge the leadership of the VFW uh, in general. They have been really open and supportive of working with us. Uh, we we work through an appraisal process with them and a purchase and sale agreement, and I'll turn it over to Rob for you know the the quick specifics on on why this property. Thanks, Dave. Um, yeah, so this is a almost one acre piece of property uh, in the neighborhood business district. Uh, this district allows for a, a number of possible uses, but in particular the the uses that we're we're looking at. 
um, allowed by right in, in the location by site plan review. The, um, the dimensional requirements fit very nicely for the intended use for a, a, a enough uh, density for the uh, supportive housing units uh, based on the land area and uh, space available. Um, the property, you know, contains a building that was built in 1961. It, it really doesn't have a whole lot of value uh, for the intended purpose. Uh, it's uh, a, a single story with a finished lower level. Uh, it is not fully handicapped accessible. It doesn't contain sprinkler systems and just isn't of a quality construction that would be suitable for change of use. Uh, uh, we also, you know, looked at this property um, by location, uh, great access to the downtown uh, sidewalks, uh, walkways, crosswalks in all directions, uh, bus uh, mm -hmm. stops directly across the street. Um, and um, uh, a nice flat level uh, uh, area to redevelop uh, would make it an easy uh, project to, uh, to start. Um, approximately half of the property is, uh, you know, covered by either pavement or a building. Uh, we envision that being removed uh, and the site being prepped for uh, future, um, you know, construction and development. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Sean, I may turn to you on the next piece, but um, the proposed order uh, relates to allowing, to recommending the purchase, but, or to allowing the purchase, the order would, but it does not specify funding. And uh, you had an answer to that question for the committee, I believe. Yeah, so the, um... So the proposed funding source for this is the American Rescue Plan Act. The um, town went through a process to allocate funds. Um, roughly a million dollars was was allocated towards uh, supporting the homeless. And so David Zomek has been sort of in charge of that, that pot of money and determining the best way to use those funds um, and has brought forward this project. Um, it doesn't need to be reappropriated because the council has already authorized the use and expenditure of the ARPA funds. So it's really within the town manager's purview to, to spend the ARPA monies. Um, but we, because this requires a land purchase, it's that part of it's being brought back uh, for discussion. Andy, if, if, if I could just add before, before we open it up to questions, it is very early in our process. Um, as, a, as we stated at the town council meeting, um, you know, we do need town council authorization to purchase. As Sean said, the source of funding, 775, is coming from ARPA funds. Um, we will have some remaining funds that we hope to allocate to some pre-development work that that Rob and his team will and the planning department will will uh, uh, spearhead. We also recognize that um, this is new information for the community. There will, you know, we we will need. This is not an effort that Amherst can shoulder alone. We are going to need partners in this. Obviously, Craig's Doors could be a partner. Uh, but they are a service provider. We're going to need development partners. We have a wonderful group of, of development uh, uh, nonprofits and other uh, similar organizations in the Valley, uh, some of whom you all know about, the, the Valley CDCs, the Wayfinders, the Home City developers out of Springfield, and the list goes on. Uh, many of them very experienced at, at this kind of work. And uh, again, we are not going to be able to, this will be a heavy lift. It'll take some years to do. And honestly, it's going to be some millions of dollars. Um, this is not something that the town can do on its own. But site control, as Rob said, having a flat, accessible site that is developable with the right zoning, uh, close to all the, the uh, amenities and services that Rob said on water and sewer, that's what make it um, uh, an important piece of property to look at. Um, we know that there will be uh, opportunities for us to do outreach to the business community, to uh, those who live close to the parcel, and all of that process is is a, uh, is ahead. Um, uh, but it's a little too early to be speculating about size and numbers and and configuration of the building. We don't know any of that yet. Uh, we just know that there are models out there that have been very successful. And we'll try to learn from those models in Eastern Mass and some of the ones that are getting underway here in Western Mass. Um, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank both of you for your presentation. 
And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, recognize committee members for a few minutes, and then I want to go to back to public comments. So uh, our public, uh, you can leave your hand up. Doesn't matter. I remember that it was up before Tom. So uh, I will. We will get to you. But I wanted to hear councilor questions and just in order that I think they went up. Uh, Lynn. Yeah, I have two questions. So in because we had already authorized um, ARPA funds, does that mean we do not need to do a public forum? Uh, so we are not asking for an appropriation. This is a grant. So we don't do hold public forums when we expend grant funds generally. Um, so okay. I would, yeah. All right. And my second question is, when do we have to sign this purchase and sales by? Um, the purchase and sale is signed by the town manager, Lynn. So okay. that's already been done. We are actually moving uh, fairly rapidly. If the council uh, on the 19th, uh, votes in favor of the acquisition, we hope to close by the middle of January. Okay, I'm not sure we put it on the agenda. It, it may so. be on the next agenda, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, I'm so mixing, if, it, if mixing it's up on the 9th, it's still can it's still early enough. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We, we, Thank you. We, I just I, I don't think it's on the agenda. I have to go search for the agenda. But yeah, we have some my two questions. We have I, some flexibility, but we have a signed purchase and sale agreement. As I said, the, the leadership mm -hmm. of the VFW has been remarkable and, and Rob has been, you know, uh, uh, shepherding that through and they've been very supportive. Yeah, I, I mean, on top of all of that, I just want to really <laughs> thank all of you that have worked on this. This is a tremendous step forward for Amherst. Thank you. Uh, Kathy. Uh, I have a what's next question rather than the purchase question that Lynn just asked. Um, um, and this is having just seen that the we, we authorize CPA funds to buy land for the Belchertown Road complex and they're back for $2.8 million for the Belcher. So that, and we gave them land that we had. So do we have any thoughts about the next step? Would this be mainly town financed as the actual, Dave, you just said, we don't know the size or anything else, but would we be counting on external support to build build the permanent shelter, um, or would we be coming back for more? And I'm asking this because in the past we haven't asked that question very well about grants that we've received. You know, it, it does it come with strings? So this is a purchase. And the second is, if we own it completely, is it usable for a variety of purposes until we got the money? to make it bigger or different, knock it down, whatever we end up doing for the, so it's it's both before we get the next step of figuring out what the what the entity, what the shelter will look like, the home rooms, um, does it have, is it usable? And my understanding is people have been using some of those rooms. So it's the two questions on the what, and both of them are around what's next. Andy, is that all right if I Go jump ahead. in there? So why don't I answer the first question and then I'll turn the second question over to Rob, if that's okay. Um, so uh, thank you, Kathy. Um, so again, going back, um, I really wanna emphasize that this is a very first step in a long process where we are going to have to work with partners. Uh, this is not Amherst alone. We are not, uh, we have no intention, nor do we have but realistically, we are not going to fund a project of this size. This is something that we are going to have to bring in with a development partner, not unlike the East Street School Belchertown Road project. And we are going to partner with an entity like Wayfinders, like Valley CDC and others uh, to come in, help us vision the, the, the project to meet the goals we've talked about for sheltering, uh, other related services and and uh, permanent supportive housing, and ask them to go out and raise the funds, some millions of dollars to make this happen. There may well be an ask of CPA in the future 
not unlike again the East Street School and the uh, the way uh, the uh, Belcher Sound Road project. Just to clarify, uh, Kathy, um, you mentioned a number two point eight million. Uh, Wayfinders actually asked for one point eight million. Okay, one on, point. Um, I, I um, exactly. Exactly. And I, and I yeah. think Sean and I have been working on that um, uh, okay. in parallel to the CPAC, and and we think we've we've come up with a, 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 a perhaps a more realistic um, okay, uh, sorry, number sorry. to support I, that. But yes, the answer is we would have to partner. There is no way this is going to be an Amherst lift. And I'll turn it over to Rob for questions about the usability of the the current building. Thank you for correcting me. I completely missed yeah. It. No, no worries. So the, the VFW had um, given up their licenses for the alcohol service and assembly space a couple of years ago. So the building hasn't been uh, maintained or inspected for that purpose. Uh, about you know this past last winter, uh, we did authorize Craig's Doors to operate a small capacity warming center there uh, that was appropriate in, in the large open uh, ground level uh, space that has the uh, the ramp leading to it. So um, there's there's parts of the building that are not appropriate for use. The fire department actually shut down the, the gas connection to the to the commercial kitchen, uh, and that's been disconnected and made safe. So it would need some work uh, to be used. And the building does not have a sprinkler or uh, fire detection system. So the the, the options are limited. Uh, so I just want, you know, I don't want to suggest that the building could easily be used for something. Um, it would be very limited if it was brought into a condition that was, um, could pass inspection and, and gain occupancy for. Okay, thank you. Oops, sorry. Bob, did you have something? Yeah, I, I just wanted to echo Kathy's uh concerns about um you know what's next and what the future uh, uh you know what the future obligations of the town might be and i understand it's too early and i understand dave your 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 opinion is that it's not going to be an amherst driven uh project uh but i you know given that we already have tremendous um pressure on the budget um, that we just talked about for the first hour. I, I just, I'm concerned. I mean, I think this is a great idea. Don't get me wrong. I, I fully support the idea, but I, I do think we have to be very cautious in terms of making making it clear that where the, the funding is coming from uh, as we move forward. And, and I think you've I think you've you've stated that day pretty well, but I just don't want us to forget. You know, like two years from now. <laughs> so thanks. Good. Thanks, uh, Bernie. Yeah. Um, gentlemen, this solves a major, major problem when you're trying to start any program, which is citing it. I used to have a sign in my office that says somewhere else, which is the best place for any program. So you've just solved the somewhere else problem. So thank you. Um, I'm happy to know that the town is not intending to uh, construct or run the shelter, that that's something that will be left to uh, a, an appropriate not-for-profit organization. Um, I'm fully supportive of that. I don't think the town should be in the shelter business. Being a landlord is one thing, being in the business, it's providing the services, a whole nother process. So, uh, you know, I think this is a good move. Um, I'm presuming that there's going to be money left over and that it, uh, that million dollar allocation that will uh, take care of the cost of raising the building. It's, it's going to have to be taken down and recycled. Um, and, you know, I, I too will try to hold everyone to the promise that this is going to be uh, operated by a third party and not by the town. So, but again, thank you. If I could, Andy, uh, Bob and and Bernie absolutely you know agree with your comments and and Rob and I at the direction of 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 Paul have clearly gone into it with those assumptions. Uh, we are not uh, we are well aware of uh, and Rob and, and my work touches so many projects throughout town. We are well aware of the, the 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 four capital projects and then all of the other projects, many of which we are involved with at different levels throughout town. 
Um, we are very aware of the budgetary constraints. Um, we are moving forward to try to acquire a site um, and then the hard work really begins, frankly. Um, um, it's taken us, you know, a year, year and a half to identify different properties and find this site and and hopefully close on it in, in January. But uh, then we've got to roll up our sleeves and and find those partners. And and again, this is the goal is to to really achieve one of the the, the broad goals of that the council set for the town manager and for the community. Um, but we recognize we are not shelter developers we are not shelter operators and that is crystal clear in all of our minds so we're going forward with that those assumptions so thank you well please take matt first matt oh just a quick question and dave thank you so much for the work on this and you know it's a really important issue i um I guess I want to echo what I'm hearing, but I just wanted to ask, um, you know, looking at just other municipalities around our size, I mean, how typical is it for for us to be the the landlord on something like this versus, um, you know, partnering and and having the organization, the management organization, you know, own the property? I mean, I, as others have said, I mean, it it, it is a little concerning to make a purchase now with you know with such a long timeline ahead of us and not knowing sort of you know how this is going to sit on the books. Um, again, happy to have Rob chime in here, but although I, I don't want to presuppose where we go with this, but I think a typical way for a municipality to, to proceed would be not unlike the East Street School project. Uh, that is a piece of property that the town has owned for a long time as a school and, and, and had other uses, and we are in the process of entering a ground lease a very long-term ground lease. So even though the town may remain the owner, for all intents and purposes, we are leasing that property to Wayfinders for a very, very long time. And I could see this project moving in that direction. Um, I forwarded to the town manager and, and it might be helpful to have that sent around. I could get it to Sean. Uh, there was an article in the Greenfield Recorder within a few days about their project. I believe they're proposing a $23 million. And again, I don't know the particulars of it. It was just in the recorder, but um, the state is very, right now, very supportive of these projects where, where it's a combination of sheltering and permanent supportive housing. So I think our timing is very good. There's state and federal funding for these projects. Um, and again, I think if we if our window is is right, uh, we can try to move this forward during that that open window with the state, but we would not be running the shelter. We would not be um, uh, developing, owning a building uh, of this size. Yeah, just a quick follow up, if you don't mind. So, so do you foresee us building the building? No, 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 no absolutely not. We would not build this building. This and would so be do, you a, have, do we have prospective you know obviously we don't have can name name but do we have prospective partners in mind who want to make a you know who want to take out the loan and and do this build this it's as i mentioned i i, I rattled through some of the nonprofit yeah. uh um developers who do similar types of work yeah. um i've already had conversations with two of them um but again it's still too early to really we we don't have a development partner at this point that would all be worked out in you know probably in the new year and again this is you know rob jump in here anytime but this is a three to five year horizon easily to to move this forward and, and can i jump in real quick andy yeah and matt just again to the timing arpa sort of made this a, a possibility having the arpa funds we do have some uh, restrictions on when they can be spent um knowing that the town that allocated a million for homelessness and this being a goal of the council, it seems like the right time to get the land secured and then work out the details about how it'll be developed in the future. Yeah, no, that's that's great. And, and I apologize, Dave. I, I know you talked about the development. So just to be clear, though, the developer would incur building costs. I mean, we're, we are really looking at town costs ending at the purchase of the property. Um, 
By and large, yes. But as I said uh, in response to one of Kathy's questions earlier, I think it's realistic at some point that a developer might come back for CPA funds if the project were eligible for CPA funds. We'll also be looking, uh, as you, you might have seen in our um, prospectus in our PowerPoint, our hope is to work with um, our veterans agent, Steve Connor. There are um, various vouchers available to veterans, and that is a very um, consistent and predictable source of income. And, and our hope is for, for a developer and our hope is uh, through various vouchers, our hope is to um, uh, set aside some of the units for eligible uh, veterans. So so that would all be on the, on the developer, not on the town of Amherst. So if it's okay with the committee, I would like to actually um, see if there's public comment that uh, on this particular issue, uh, because uh, fine with me. Said we would do that. Yeah, that's fine. I can wait. Um, so this is a uh, request request now for public comment. I know the person had had their hand up before and took it down. Hello. Okay, you're in. Tom. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So um, yes, um, yeah. No, I'm reaching out. Um, I am. Uh, I work in property management and own and operate properties in this particular neighborhood. Um, uh, and I am excited, uh, both good and bad, for what what the potential is for this project. I know that there's a need for uh, shelter in various capacities. Um, I am wondering how the public will be engaged in the process of this development, um, if there's going to be a committee that, that works through this, if we would have the opportunity to have a voice or a seat at the table, and um, I do trust that there's, there are some uh, diligent organizations that will do a terrific job running this, um, but I'm wondering what type of participation can be applied for the, uh, for the owners of uh, abutting properties in terms of uh, protecting their vested interest. Thank you for your comment and uh, appreciate it. Uh, we don't have a uh, guarantee of responding to public comment to take it under advisement, but if um, David or Rob or um, Lynn want to respond to that, they're certainly welcome to do so. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I'm happy to quickly respond. No, Tom, thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, I think it's an excellent one. And, and I guess I would say um, we are, we will take it under advisement. We absolutely um, want to have as much public participation in this project. It's going to be a very high profile project for the town. Um, I, I did uh, engage with the town manager briefly by email today around kind of next steps. We we have not we have not determined those yet. Honestly, um, we're simply working on getting through the process of acquisition, and then we can take a little bit of a deep breath and say what's next. But we hear you, Tom. We know there will be uh, interest. There will be some concern. There will be lots of questions. Um, what is this going to be? Uh, what's it going to look like? Everything from any development, traffic, uh, hours of operation, potential impacts uh, near and far. Um, you know, how big is it going to be? We don't even know that. We don't know how many people it will serve. Will it be a shelter for 10 people or will it be a shelter for 25 people? None of that has been determined yet. Um, we have not looked at at any of that. Uh, but we will, and um, we will take your your question um, internally here, and, and Rob and I will talk with the town manager, and and there may well be a committee. I can't commit to that. I'd like to get some feedback from from Rob and and um, Paul uh, on that. So we will we will uh, let the community know. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm going to exercise prerogative of the chair and ask one question of Rob. Is my understanding from what you said before that there is no zoning change that would be required to um, use this land for the envisioned purpose? Is that correct? 
That's correct. Both the the residential portion of of this type of facility and the uh, congregate shelter itself are both uses that are permitted in the district by site plan review, um, which is a by right use uh, authorized by the planning board. So there would be no hearing attached to any zoning change because there would be none. Uh, Correct. Lynn? Now, let me begin with a response to Tom Crossman and say that in a similar situation of 132 Northampton Road, uh, the both the town and the developer uh, had a serious engagement with the surrounding community. And as a result, some additional features of that property were added uh, that have really helped the neighbors to feel much more comfortable about that facility. So um, I just wanna say that while there's, we don't do building committees for buildings we're not going to build, but there has been some serious engagement process that have led to uh, very honored input from neighbors. So um, we hope that will happen here. Uh, I had two other comments. One is, this is two housekeeping items. One is Alicia left at 404 and Michelle Miller had to leave at 449. And um, once we get done with other council comments, um, this the earliest this, this can go on the agenda is the 9th of January. We did not post it for the meeting on the 19th of December, uh, but I would suggest that we go ahead and vote recommended recommended to the council tonight. Okay, uh, Kathy. Um, I second that motion, if that was a motion, and I just want to um, state even more strongly if, um, is Matt still here, um, Dave's caveat about town money, when CPA is town money, um, and we, this year, the number of requests far exceeded what we have, and we can go into debt for it but a competing part of it is our community fields, not just, you know, community fields, recreation areas, name it. So, so um, when we take on these projects as yet, Dave, not a single housing project has come to us that didn't need CPA. I'm not saying I can never imagine one in my time, um, but they also take a uh, community block grant money, you know, so that's become part of the package that brings in the state dollars, you know, the, other people's money dollars. So I think we need to be careful to say that it's it may not be on the town budget, but one of the ways our town budget is functioning well is we're using opportunities to fund things under CPA, which might otherwise be funded under the town budget. Um, right. So the athletic fields are a, a recent example of that. But I mean, so not not to discount that we're in a think of the whole budget in the future for this. So I just I just wanted to make it clear that Dave spoke very carefully when he said, you know, work with these partners. He didn't say the partners will come up with all the money needed for this. Um, so that was all, it was just a comment because this year it's a pretty big set of requests. Um, so these things, and it's all things we want. So not a thing, almost nothing's on the list that we wouldn't want to have, so. And if I can just clarify, real, I, Kathy, th thank you for saying that. I, I, I misspoke, what I meant was town debt. I didn't, I didn't really mean grants and other available fund sources, I, I meant debt. Yeah. Hey, um, Dave and Lynn, then I want to close this because I think we need to uh, move towards adjournment. So I think and, uh, but I think we now have a. I just want to clarify with Lynn and Kathy. We have a motion on the floor, and the motion is that we recommend. I think that the appropriate me, thing to do is to to recommend the order. Yeah, let me let me make a more formal motion. Um, I recommend. I recommend. No, no. I move that we recommend that the town council approve an order authorizing the acquisition of property for sheltering, affordable housing, supportive slash transitional housing, and or supportive service purposes. 
just and I said like second, and we're looking at that. That motion is in our packet, so it has the dollar amount and the verbiage behind it is this is ARPA money. So um, it goes as a package, yes. I, I can show it on the screen if you want me to, Andy. No, I'm seconding that motion. Um, now you've got me confused because uh, we have an order that was uh, drafted and submitted to the council too. I think that's in our finance package for tonight. Yes. Yeah. It's the same order, isn't it? So Lynn's just recommending that order. Yeah, she's recommending that order, Andy. That's what I understood. So should the uh, motion be, I can't get to it, uh, what the, there was a number to the order. It, there's no number in this one. Sean, do you have a number? So it's not, it's not an appropriation. Um, order so i i don't have one i don't know if athena is still on but um because it's not an appropriation order it doesn't come through sonia and through the accounting office athena's raised her hand okay athena athena i, I gotta allow her to talk alone there she goes you're you're in athena Thanks. Sorry, I had to join a different way so I can be in two meetings at once. Um, the or, Sean's right. We use the order numbers for um, financial orders, and this doesn't have a financial component at the moment. So it's it's a it, it would be a certified vote of the council rather than a financial order number. So I would actually take that out um, when the council approves it. Do we not need to say this in the money is coming from ARPA? Do, there's no dollar number in here and there's no source number. I mean, it's a blanket, go ahead and buy it. Um, it it's an I authorization just, for the town manager to purchase. This is, and, and I don't believe that, Sean can probably answer this better than I can about use of ARPA funds, but we haven't made appropriations for ARPA funds. Is that right, Sean? Right, again, it's not an appropriation, so you don't have to specify um, the amount because it's within the town manager's purview to to spend it um obviously he's going to try to get the uh spend <laughs> efficiently and wisely um which is why we've given you the backup but it doesn't have to be in this order but do we not have any language that says we think the price is 450 uh 750 and it's coming from orpa i mean i'm just this is a, a as written this is um go out and buy it <laughs> is the way i yeah, I mean that's that's what you're. That's essentially what the council is doing is is giving the town manager approval to go out and buy it for and the based on the price that for the backup that he's provided. Yeah, I think that's okay, Kathy. When you think about it, because he can't use any non-grant funds for the purpose without coming back to the council for authorization, so that this authorizes him to buy, but doesn't give him any money that he doesn't already control which is only grant money right but but we've been told an amount and arpa there's money in arpa going for other things too um i well there's a there's a purchase and sale agreement signed dave right that has a number in it right so yeah. can't we i'm just looking for based on the purchase and sale you something sean that you know anchors it into we're we're looking at a purchase and sale agreement it's not a Okay, why don't I do this? Amend the motion to say that we recommend that the town, town, town council approve this order, blah, 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 based on the uh, evident, the provision of, of the purchase and sale agreement or something like that. If somebody else amended, but mention the purchase and sale agreement and we can even attach it. That would make me feel a whole lot better. Thank you, and Kathy. I can't. I can't see anybody here. Um, but Dave and I can check with our legal counsel too. We worked with legal counsel to draft this. Um, I, you know, I think, I if I could, the que that question was asked of Sharon Everett, and really, because it's ARPA funds, it is not needed in in the order. It is not an order. It is an order to purchase, and I think Lynn's. Um, and that is needed legally for a municipality to purchase land. Um, but because it's coming from ARPA funds, it does not have to have the, the purchase amount. But I think Lynn's um, amendment to the motion 
contingent upon a purchase and sale agreement, and we can get Sean the details of that in Athena, and that can be packaged as part of the motion. Uh, even in your motion, you could say, as per the purchase and sale agreement dated on such and such a date for the purchase price of 775. Period. Right. And we, so that's all we, I was asking for. Yeah. Not, not to, Sean, I wasn't suggesting rewrite the order. I was yeah. saying yeah. that the, the motion we're passing be anchored in that purchase and sale. Perfect. And, and if the purchase ever did change, we would bring it back to you. I mean, we wouldn't tell you it's going to be one number and then buy it for a different number. So just as a, as a general rule, we would. Uh, we can make sure all of that is written for the uh, motions on the 9th of January. But Athena, you have your hand up again. Thanks. Just I just wanted to clarify. I'm sorry, Andy. I was just saying, please take the screen share down so that we. I did. Because I'm. I, I took it down, Andy. I don't know I why. Don't know what I'm, okay. Our, our, it's down for me. Yeah. So for the motion now, I have to recommend the council approve the order with the order title in accordance with the purchase and sale agreement and price signed by the town manager. Dave, is it correct that? Paul signed the PNS. Okay, so mm -hmm. I can say signed as signed by the town manager. Um, is that acceptable to the Lynn and Kathy? Yes. Yes. Thanks. Okay, so we have a motion that's been made and seconded. I don't think we, unless there's a request for further discussion, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, I'll ask the resident members first whether they support, and then I'm going to ask the three members of the council are present and note the absences. So, uh, Bob? Uh, I support. Uh, Matt? Support, thank you. Uh, Bernie? I support. Uh, Michelle is absent uh, at this point. Kathy? Yes. I'm a yes. Uh, Alicia is an absent at this point, and Lynn? Aye. So it's three in favor, none opposed, two members absent, and three resident members in support. So I think that uh, the only thing that I want to touch on, because I'm not going to do minutes today, is uh, the next committee meeting. Um, and Lynn, I think, is going to quickly put that agenda up just in case there are any questions about it, and uh, which I think means that Dave will be back with us uh, on Tuesday. If you can't find it, I'll put I'll, then let me share. Andy, are you all set with with Rob and myself? Thank you. Uh, were you able to find it, Lynn? I, I think I'm coming back to talk about the park yeah, grant for Hickory Ridge next Tuesday. Out. Let me just—I'm uh, yeah. just going to read the topics that are on the agendas, so people know, and then we can go ahead and uh, see if there's any un unanticipated business and close. Um, so I think now I'm trying to make sure I also have the correct, uh, and I just realized I pulled up the wrong one myself. It's up on the screen, Andy. Okay. So, um, so what we have on the agenda for next, for Tuesday, includes um we we don't need the guidelines anymore so that will be eliminated from discussion it's been posted but we're, we're done with that um i don't know that we have reserved the opportunity to come back to talk about transfer fees um i think that um we're we're now done with 457 main street remember what happened with this was that it was posted 
it had to be posted before the start of today's meeting because of the two day rule. And so we just threw everything in um, to the posting, but not with the intention that we would actually have to talk about it. So item three is done and um, we probably don't need to talk about four any further. The major things that are water and sewer regulation needs to come back because there's one modification that might be important for us to know about. Um, and uh, the and I'll come back to that in a second in Hickory Ridge. And then we we'll hopefully get to finish up the minutes problem. So those would be the major purposes we're trying to keep to be a very limited meeting because it is a holiday week also, and we don't want it to be long. The, um, the reason that the uh, sewer regulation um, would be back on the table, and Sean uh, will explain this next week and we'll know more information, is that uh, they've been talking with insurance uh, companies uh, that might provide insurance to the town to um, limit the um, town's uh, liability on taking on this additional cost. And uh, we uh, should have quotes before we meet on Tuesday and be able to recalculate. And it could reduce the rates that are in the, uh, the that we talked about at the last meeting. Um, so it's additional information, but important for the committee to have. So that's the reason that that's back on the agenda. Um, the only other thing that I want to quickly mention is that uh, Kathy and I have been working on a report for the uh, for the finance committee to give to the council for the <laughs> meeting next week, and uh, we're hoping to have that draft done um, by uh, tomorrow. Um, hopefully noon and if we can we will send it to the committee but there's very little turnaround time because it is friday it needs to be posted so that uh, if we don't have any uh, comments by the end of the day on uh, friday tomorrow um, we're going to have to close it and uh, submit the report so i uh, just wanted to let you know that and with that said, is there any other uh, requests for um, things were not anticipated that need to be asked? Seeing none, thank you. This has been a uh, full meeting, but a very productive meeting. So thank you, Hi, everybody. Thanks, everybody.